the uh, instrument I have the privilege to play on is a, a violin made by Antonio Stadivari. This particular violin was built in 1734, and that means it was built when Stadivari was at the age of 90. It's uh, really amazing to imagine that somebody at the age of 90, not only having arrived in good health, but he is in the position to carve wood in such detail in order to produce an instrument um, of unsurpassable beauty and incredible sound as well. When this violin was built, I think is enough to say that, um, for instance, there was none of the big concertos that we know today composed, nor, nor was the orchestra and the symphony orchestra um, existing in the way and operating in the way that we know today. Um, nor were the concert halls that were as big and as, as huge as today. And uh, therefore, um, what is amazing achievement by somebody like Stadivari is that he built instruments that would serve uh, conditions that were unknown to him. That means he was ahead of his time, very much ahead of his time. And today we are, you know, 250 years later and then we still cannot um, find an instrument that can combine the power but also the colors of the sound of an old instrument. The power we have, I have to say, amazing um, uh, violin makers today in our time which have produced instruments that have very strong voice and um, they are extremely well built, but there is one element that one Kierkegaard cannot still win, which is the time. And that means that uh, even for Stadivari instruments, when they were made in the first hundred years of li their lives, there were comments that people, the great violins of the time, would prefer the Amati violins because they were a little more mature in their sound. So the wood needs that time. It needs also to be played. That's why it's, it's, uh, it's very important that uh, these instruments um, keep being heard in the concert halls. With this instrument I go back quite a long way. Um, uh, back in the 90s I had got then the first time a Stradivari to play on and uh, I was all excited about it and uh, happy up in the sky as any violinist, uh, young violinist uh, would be. And uh, um, it was an amazing time because that was a time when in New York's Metropolitan Museum the, um, there was an exhibition of the other great maker of Cremona, uh, Joseph Guarnerius. Um, and um, there were like about 35 instruments that were exhibited in the museum and at the end of the exhibition there was a concert using that instrument. And I was invited to play one of these concerts. And um, that was a time when I got my first ride to play on. And I was totally excited, um, as I said before. And uh, I went to show it to, to the different uh, violin makers uh, and dealers that were all, as you can imagine, in New York at the time for the great exhibit. And uh, as I showed my violin, and uh, they praised it, of course, and so on, then they asked me, said, look, um, there is also this Stradivarius here. Why don't you just play a couple of notes on it so we can hear it? And this was this violin, which then belonged to a very nice man who owned another two Guarneri violins that were in the exhibition. So this violin, as a Stradivarius, was not in the exhibition, so he had it with him. And I, I put the bow on the string, and and it was really um, something undescribable because you know how it is, you are very excited about that something. And then right at that moment, when you think you own the world, comes something that is even better. It's like, it's a shock. So I played a couple of notes and I thought, wow, that is also possible, that there is such kind of sound. Um, and I said to myself, I hope one day I can be privileged to, to 
have such kind of violin in my hands and be able to make music on it. And uh, two years ago, um, one and a half years ago, um, I was visiting London and uh, I went uh, to, uh, I always, when I go to London, I always visit my friend Florian Leonard, who has uh, one of the best shops in the world for violins. I went there to talk about violins and he always has beautiful instruments. And then he said, I want to show you something. And then this came. So I was, you know, how it goes like, all of a sudden, 20 years go by very fast. And uh, he says, do you know this violin? I said, what? Do I know this violin? Of course I do. It's already, I know it since the 90s. And, um, and I said, uh, oh, can I play it? So I tried it, and it was, again, the same kind of effects. And uh, I asked, so is it available, or is it here just to restore it or something like this? And he said, no, it's available. So it all somehow worked. We all worked in such way that this could um, um, this could happen, and uh, and uh, it's really amazing s how sometimes life sometimes life brings things. And um, uh, here I am with an instrument that 25 years ago I was dreaming that maybe one day I will be blessed enough to have it in my hands.